Hey everybody, welcome back to Roman Cinema. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Bo is Afraid, Ari Aster's new film, now out on digital for rent or purchase. Don't do either. Uh, you can find us at youtube.com slash at Roman Cinema. Subscribe to keep up to date with our new episodes. And you can see our shorts at TikTok, on TikTok, at Roman Cinema. Today I'm joined by my guest, Nate and Jake. Jake, how are you? I'm doing great. I, um, I had my worldview shifted by this film. Not in a significant way, but just in a, what the hell is this? Yeah. What uh, is film, you know? Yeah, I, th- I thought it was a lot of fun. I think we're going to have a lot of fun talking about it. Um, I'd, I'd throw in a rare... Maybe not that rare. It's This movie's weird. It's one of those movies where you can't... Someone can't tell you what it's about until you've seen it. Yeah. So, if you're going to see this movie... See it first. I agree. Yeah, I guess you could spoil it. I feel like I told Taylor everything that happened in this movie, and it's still like I didn't get it across. Yeah, that's yeah. But yeah, uh, I I think the issue is like so much of the movie is just like visual. Yeah. Or that that even if you're telling what's happening in the plot. True. I tried to capture it in my notes very eloquently, so we'll see if that worked. We'll see. I haven't looked at your notes yet. I I rewrote it so it's like paragraphs, so we can like have a little story to talk about, then a break, then a break. Yeah, yeah, we're getting producer quality now. Let's go. You you forgot to you forgot to put in uh, little pauses for Nate to get mad that you forgot something. I don't think that'll happen in this movie. I think it'll be speeded up there, bro. Yeah, as as I'm scrolling through, please do. I'm realizing that. You and didn't. Uh, yeah, also, I looked at the doc and I was like, Jesus, I, I quit after it's like four three hour minutes. movie. This is the most detailed Ben's ever been on yeah. the most insane movie we've ever He watched. is awoken at 3.53 p.m. Yeah, he was. It's an important <laughs> fact. They stare at the camera for a minute. We'll get into it. Nate, how are you? I feel I'm fine. I just watched <laughs> this movie and I'm like reeling. Uh, okay, to be clear, I watched this movie, and then I made dinner real quick and talked to Taylor about it, and kept vacillating between, I was like, oh, this part, and then I'd be like, oh, I hate this movie, and I'd be like, oh, well, this part was pretty cool, and I'm like, but this, I, I don't ever want to watch this again, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone, and she kind of pushed back, she was like, she's like, well, was it just not for you, Wait, or was it t- bad, and I was like, so, Bo- both, I think, so she, but I'm not she sure. didn't watch it then, right? Oh, no, not, a, not one bit, no. Yeah. She walked through the room like three times at some pivotal moments. And like the attic kept walking scene? quickly. Penis. <laughs> uh, no, she didn't see that one. Did you see That's Walking like Phoenix's balls? That's like almost comical. The, those big boys. Dude, I... Well, we'll get into it. But like they just don't mention it for the, at the beginning and you just see them and you're like, are they weird looking? And then they <laughs> when, he goes, when he gets hit by the van and you're yeah. like, those were... Wow. Mine was when he All crossed right. his legs getting into the tub. That's when I saw him first. I was like, Jesus oh, okay. Christ. Was, Those are some clangers. My ball radar wasn't as strong. I had to look up for my notes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm still processing this movie, and that's a whole experience. Yeah, I didn't watch it again. You I, did watch it again. That was one of Taylor's first questions. Was it better watch this I twice? did not. No, once. Once for oh, me. you didn't. You didn't. Okay, no, you did. no, no, no. I yeah, you absolutely you not. See, I watched and, like the first ten minutes again, but that was it. Mm. It's funny because I, and and maybe the same. I I want to go back. I'm not going to. <laughs> I want to go back and and rewatch at least the first third of the movie. Um, because once you get some of the reveals by the end, and you get to know what kind of what's going on i bet there's a lot of things you would catch there is i even in the first 10 minutes of the second watch i was like oh this and this and this and this like it's they pile up quick yeah you're right and that might be more fun easter egg hunting rather than yeah that. exactly that's what the second watch through would be ball is. sack hunting yeah oh dear or both yeah, so he looks like he's walking slower like he's way down <laughs> let's do a quick intro for youtube uh, Bo is Afraid is Ari Aster's third feature-length movie and a continuation of his theme of trying to unsettle his audiences. This movie follows Bo, played by Joaquin Phoenix, and his journey home. Heck yeah. Is it Joaquin? I always thought it was Joe Kwan. <laughs> yeah, it's Joaquin. J- Jack Wayne. Jack Wayne. Phoenix. Hooked on Phoenix. 
So nice. Uh, we opened the movie with a point of view horror birth. That was fun. Um, yep. If you ever wanted to know what being a baby was like, being born, go ahead and watch For that. Me, the subtitles were were a lot. You had subtitles on, on? that one. I always have subtitles. I on. always have subtitles on. What the fuck? Uh, I can't. Okay, hang on. During comedies, do you have subtitles on? Because I feel like they spoil no. jokes a lot. On stand up, it's the only time I turn subtitles off. Good. Is during stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Because they spoil the joke. But yeah, this exactly. Uh, but this, I ha- yeah, I usually have them on, and there was a lot of the subtitle writer was doing a lot of interpretation <laughs> of the sounds we were hearing. <laughs> it was so I have a Dolby Atmos soundbar, not to brag. Um, at my house, and it was the most horrific thing to have that in Atmos. It's like above you, behind you, around you. It was horrifying. I've got I've got surround sound. And I turned it up. I kept turning it up as it was slowly building, and then it got. And I was like, Oh no! And I turned it. Back down. <laughs> it was rough. It was rough. Yeah. Uh, so we meet Bo in a psychiatrist's office. He's a bit of a hypochondriac. He's visiting, he's visiting his mom for an anniversary of the day uh, his dad died, and he never knew his dad. Uh, recurring dream of a woman pulling a boy into a tub that keeps coming up. Uh, his mom might not be the best environment for him. Uh, the psychiatrist is trying to get at him for that. He's getting a new drug for his do- from his doctor. The last one made his eyes itchy, and he has to take it with water, or if he gets hot or short of breath, it's real bad. So that's how we're introduced to Bo. Yeah. It's cool it's a uh, yeah. So we're in this scene. I first of all, at this point, the movie's. I mean, other than the birth scene, it's still, you know, yeah. it's not surreal yet. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, you definitely think, okay, this is odd. The psychiatrist is kind of a weirdo. Mm-hmm. You know. I love that uh, actor too. I I can't remember his name, but I love him. Yeah, uh, I, li- I like him. He's been too. in other things. He's been in other things where he's not dissimilar. And I... Stephen McKinley Henderson is his name. He's been in Fences, Lady Bird, Bo's Afraid, Lincoln. He's in a lot of stuff. Dune. He was in Dune. Um, that's that's what I'm thinking of him from. Because yeah. he's like a, a not Wu Tang in American Saga. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. No. I. I. You're not even. It's Dune. It's a similar like. He's like a henchman crony who's like smart, but like kind of creepy. Yeah. Uh, he plays that role well. Yeah. He plays like uh, he, Viserys. Is that the guy in Game of Thrones or the eunuch? Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. That, he's he's, that he's got that. Oh, and even like as a therapist here, he's got that thing where even when he's when he's smiling and, and trying to be at his most comforting, it's also like there's something sinister. Mm. I, I got those vibes from him right away. Um, yeah. And then and I thought that. Cool. Okay, okay, maybe it's later. yeah. That, I was like, maybe it's something with this therapist. And then as the movie progressed and got more and more surreal, I was like, okay, never mind. The the therapist is just another character in this wacky, wacky world. Wacky stories. So Bo walks home through a horror scene of death, destruction, rudeness, trash, and Bo has to run as fast as he can into his door so he isn't attacked by a man outside. Sparks welcome him to his floor from his elevator. Warnings about brand r- brown recluse spiders are shown, and we see one lurking in his apartment that he doesn't see. He's surrounded by possible issues and fears. This is where I... So I have anxiety, and I have like felt that worst-case scenario spiral in my head, and I've like had thoughts that those th- types of things could happen. Like, I'm going to go for a walk. I'm going to get stabbed by somebody walking. You know what I mean? Um, but they never like manifested as long as his did. And I thought it was a really interesting way to show anxiety, and like it felt very real to me like oh yeah if i see a warning about a spider i'm pretty sure they're in my house i'm never going to see them until they kill me and like all that felt very real Um, and they keep popping up yeah 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 and this is when i started to think are all these real or are we just seeing what's happening to him because i read that ari oster wanted us to experience the movie through bo's point of view and i thought that this was not how the world is but how he sees the world i'm i don't know i'm i'm I definitely agree with that to a point, but I think there's a problem with, with claiming that everything is like the unreliable narrator, Mm. because obviously a lot of this stuff is coming from, you know, okay, we're experiencing this through Bo's anxiety. 
uh, not all of this is to be taken literally, but I, th I think that's where the trick in this movie is, is I think it's very easy to explain everything as mm -hmm. that. And I don't think that's the case. That's a very good point. Yeah, it's I, it's like the unreliable narrator's unreliable narrator. Like, are we to take all of this as that because we're told that that's what it is and that's what he's been told yeah. his whole life? Or is there some of it that's real? And, like, you, you, uh, there's a moment when I think he comes out of it and it's real and then it's not real again. But, yeah, that's a really good point. I like that. Because I want to hear where you... Go ahead. I'll, for the first, like... 30 minutes of this movie maybe 45 that's that's i was like oh i got this movie figured out it's mm. none, none of this stuff is actually as it seems it we're just seeing it through the the eyes of a man who's dealing with terrible crippling anxiety and this is how he sees the world but then as the movie went on i'm like okay I, you know it, I, it it becomes too much to mm. just be that yeah. and then and then i started looking at it through the lens of okay some of this is his anxiety coming through some of this is symbolic and some of it i think is just uh just a, a choice to be surreal as part of the medium of the storytelling i think there are three parts <clears throat> i think the forest portion is surreal i think the ending is from a real point of view and i think the beginning is from his point of view there's a except for one part the of the ending not the whole ending. Because <laughs> there, there, there are four acts to this movie. So, like, yeah. there's... If, if middle part, do you mean both of the two middle parts? Um, like the, do you mean the two... The, I, the I see. I, the yeah, I, I classify it as, like, Bo's apartment, er, like, setting. Yeah. Then, then, then the suburbanites. The then yeah, the forest, forest. And then the yeah. mom's house. So, I think it's real at Bo's... It's, it's what we're... We're shown his perspective at his house and at the suburbanites house and i don't think either mm. of those are houses by the way the okay. forest scene is like a trip essentially like i don't think any of that's real i think that's all like some moment he's having in his head um but it's like not for any reason other than us hearing a, a story like we're not experiencing mm. anything in a certain way it'll lead into my explanation of the movie and the yeah let's uh, up until he's in the attic, I also think it's real. I think that's when it starts being everyone's that's, point of view. Once he's in the attic, it's back to his point of view because he's anxiety ridden. I want to hear how that tracks. Honestly, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but 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 yeah, I I agree with what Jake was saying. Where in the first part of the movie in Bo's apartment, I agree. I was like, I was like, oh yeah, this is from Bo's point of view, like. And that's all we're seeing. And what threw me in the movie, why, like, I'm not... Because if that was it, the whole thing, I think I'd be, like, singing this movie's praises and being like, oh, you got to see this. It's so cool. Mm. And what threw me is the fact that if you track that, if it's just unreliable narrated the whole time, this isn't a story. Yep. Like, it's nothing's really happening, and that's not fun. True. Uh, and, yeah, and what threw me was like by the end I was like that doesn't make sense it can't possibly be that and I started wondering like is this just a surrealist movie where like his anxieties are real like we're seeing the mm. view like how an anxious person views the world but like everything's actually happening yeah and that's what's the going on but like I don't know like I was trying to figure out how to excuse the movie for like how insane things are sure which like I both like but for me, the problem is that the four acts feel so disconnected. Mm. Uh, and I think as you keep continue to describe the plot, it'll be clear. Like, I, like the, the forest part, it being completely surreal. Like, I'm like, this has no effect on what's going on. This is just like a side trip, uh, which I guess is up to you how much you enjoy. Yeah, right. That could have been its own like short movie, I feel like. Right, kind of that's what it felt like. Yeah, I, I, I think it <laughs> there, had, there is a short in there that I love that I I actually want to go back and watch. I was like, I told Taylor I want to show you just the from the theater back to the theater. Yeah. I just want to watch yeah. that part with you because that's a great short surreal movie. It's cool. But it has nothing to do with the movie except for a couple themes about yes about how he feels about his family. It ties into how I explain what the movie is, like why it's split up the way okay. it is. 
Um, I All also right, well, don't think he ever meets Elaine in real life. If that helps some of your thoughts about it being real or not at the end. No, I want to okay. hear all of it. All right. So yeah. serial killers on the news with a gruesome uh, life and explanation, always yelling in profanity in the background. An old picture of someone named Elaine makes him stop as he looks for a new pen to finish an ode to his mom on a gift. He got her. Bo is awakened by someone leaving a note. Oh, his... Go gift. He got her. He wrote it on top of his pill bottle. And no, it was I on thought the that was. Oh, it, well, I thought it was on the bottom of the statue. No, he he wrote he wrote that on the pill bottle, and then it cuts to the statue. But he oh, wrote it on the pill bottle. Okay, okay, okay. And I I was taking notes bef- for the first like twenty minutes before I gave up. Nice. And I wrote like he's writing a suicide note on the top of a pill bottle. Oh, which is like the darkest thing I can think of. Got it. I, I actually I went back at that point because. I thought it was the pill bottle, and then it cuts to the statue, and I'm like, oh, it, it, he must have been riding on the statue, and then I'm like, I'm pretty... So I actually went back, and okay. he, he wrote it on the pill bottle, and then it cuts to the statue. Oh, wow, yeah, that got and, me. And it basically just says, like, I know it's Dad's... It says, I know it's the anniversary of Dad's death. I love you. I'm sorry. That's it. Yeah. And I was like, that's just well, like a brief suicide note. Uh, we find out why he says I'm sorry later. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it could be seen as a suicide note for sure. So, Bo is awakened by someone leaving a note under his door at 1.05 a.m. It's asking him to lower the bass volume of his music, which there is none. 2.43 a.m., another note. He looks out in the hallway. There's no one. 3 a.m., ravenous knocking and another note flung all the way to his bed that says, You turn it up? Now Bo's walls are shaking from bass music. That part was really cool. I like that. That was fun little, like, slowly amping it up kind of thing. Yeah, well, we're... S- and- uh, I'll I'll just uh, as a real quick aside. This movie is I, I originally saw it built as a horror, definitely not a horror no. uh, by any, by any stretch. Only this was the only scene where I was like, okay, maybe it is a horror. Mm-hmm. You know, starts starts with kind of the creepy therapist, the the weird run back to his apartment, and then this, and I'm like, oh, you know, maybe it is kind of a horror. Um, definitely not how I describe it, but. This is this is the probably with the one and only scene where I would say, okay, this was kind of like a war movie, but yeah. definitely not their intent. Yeah, yeah. Ari Aster said he didn't want this to be thought of as a horror movie, which sucks because every marketing piece was like, Ari Aster, maker of Midsummer and Hereditary, and you're like, ooh, yeah. this will be freaky. Yeah. yeah, it's just more of a psychological thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I agree. I'd call it. Yeah. I'd call it suspense. I'd call it. Yeah, I don't know. It happened. I don't know what I'd call it. Yeah. So he's awoken at 3.53 p.m. by his alarm with his fingers in his ear. The music stops as he realizes that his alarm's going off, which I thought was a clue to like, oh, this is in his head. Um, he packs hurriedly as his flight leaves in a little over an hour. He trips over things in his bags and his keys get stolen as he's rushed back into his apartment. He calls his mom to let her know that he won't make it and she just stops being nice she offers no help to him as to what to do it almost sounds like she's heard the story before he tries to take his meds to feel better now is out of water everywhere and has to go out into the world to get water he sees more depravity outside which is where he needs to go for water the mom was not like it was a conversation that uh you could hear like first she wants to know what happened and then he explains the keys got stolen out of my door and my luggage got stolen and she doesn't believe him. She just thinks it's another story. Like, she's heard this story before, it sounded like. Like, his anxiety has caused him to not go visit her before. He says in the opening that it's been a couple months since he's seen her. I think eight months or six months or something like that. So we know he hasn't mm-hmm. been there for a while. So you can kind of hear that she's, you know, up, up to his own tricks again kind of thing. Interestingly, uh, that's that he says that. He says it's been a while. And his therapist uh, kind of corrects him on that. His therapist is like, well, no, it's, you know. You visit her back in whatever. So oh, yeah. I thought I thought that was at the time I didn't think anything of it, but then looking back later, it's funny because like the therapist is almost trying to say, no, it's okay. You you know, mm-hmm. you, you you it wasn't that long ago that you visited her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting because I got I have like almost the opposite read huh. of that conversation. What what I got was he t- starts telling her that his keys got stolen his mom's very nice and he's like oh so happy and excited and then he's afraid to tell her that he's not coming and starts giving like reasons why he can't make it but he's afraid to say i'm not coming Mm -hmm. yeah and 
to me, his mom slowly realized that he wasn't going to do what she wanted him to do. Mm. And that's when she becomes mean. To me, it, I didn't read it as like, oh, this has happened before. I read it as her realizing that he didn't, he wasn't doing what she wanted to do and dropped the facade of, of like friendliness and was like, you know, just started guilting him. Did the end of the movie enhance your thought of that or change your mind? 100% enhance. See, I feel the exact same way. <laughs> yeah. My... Okay, I don't. So, I don't so see. I don't see a you, big difference in how you two are interpreting this. Well, Ben's saying it, he's done it multiple times. Like he's heard it all before. Yada. Like that. That. That he does this all the time. And I'm saying, I read it as like this is. I, I didn't necessarily read it as that. Sure, probably because that's his life. But like, I read it as as soon as she realized that he wasn't going to come, she just got mad. Mm. yeah see i think i'd agree with that i didn't really get the feeling that uh i didn't get the feeling that she didn't believe him or that it happened all the time uh until late in the movie when she was you know when Mm. she confronted him about it but even then i'm like you know i i don't think it actually happens all the time i just think it, it when it does happen she goes you know, off the hinge. Do you think it's keys and bag were stolen? I don't. Uh, well, that's that's where I'm. That's the tricky part of like, oh yeah, this is always anxiety, or is this actually happening? Because there is no world. If this was in the real world and it's his perception, there is no reality in which that actually happened, or very I, very little reality mm-hmm, in which this actually mm-hmm. happened. But if he's and, actually living in this world that's horrible, then like obviously. And, and that's, I think, sort of the issue that I had, because it was at about this point, uh, and most especially the, the, the next scene, when, you're like, you know, when he gets stuck outside the apartment, that I'm like, okay, if this is unreliable narrator and this is just how he's perceiving the world, they, they went too heavy-handed on it because it gets to the point where you can't even explain it. And yeah. I, I, think, I think you're doing it wrong if that's your intent and you make it so unexplainable because I, I get it if things are shifted and if things happen a little differently and they're more exaggerated. But if you're going to, at that point you're lying to the audience so much that the audience just has to say, has to yeah. essentially yeah, make things up. Uh, uh, unreliable filmmaker as well. But I, yeah, think, exactly. I think that the way he represented it is how like anxiety feels sometimes. Like, the absolute unnecessary worst case scenario is what your brain goes to. And it's not always like a but, normal but, idea. But what is the explanation of like his keys going missing? Like, is that him rewriting reality where he didn't want to go? So his keys disappeared. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then not, and not to jump ahead. Actually, we're, we're right there. I'll, I'll just bring it up when we get there. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, I think that his I think he's in a situation where his keys and bag can't be stolen. Based on what we see later in the movie. Fair. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So Well and then I, I see, actually and had, this is uh, this is part of the reason why I'm curious to rewatch it. I'm wondering if on a rewatch, if you can't see the keys and bag in the house somewhere. Mm. Mm. I looked hard. Because I as soon as they focused out on the keys and then he disappeared, I knew they were gonna be gone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, same. Yeah, and I'm curious, Ben. Uh, the the ending we mm. we kind of talked a little bit before this, and how it recontextualizes. But I think we have a slightly different interpretation of what it meant. Okay. So I want to I want to go back to that. Yeah. Uh, we'll get there in 17 paragraphs. Ha! <laughs> Great. I'm gonna run through it quick. He has to prop his door open to his building because he doesn't have keys and he has to get water. But he sees so many people outside going like zombies and he is now locked out because someone pulled the stopper and he's stuck on a fire escape as we see people ransack his apartment he's always living the worst case scenario he wakes up with someone doing construction right over his head the apartment is empty and the building door is now accessible to him Bo gets back into his apartment can we stop right there yeah again just clarify is this real life or not is he actually sleeping on the fire escape outside of his apartment that night 
or is I this don't know. what he's imagining happens? See, that's where I, I was, that's that's yeah, the problem. That's, that's what we're getting at. It's, and I was I was going to bring this up just at the end of this paragraph, but but it's essentially this. So he 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 gets back in, and his apartment is just torn apart, holes in the walls, appliances broken. And it's like, are, are we are we to believe that that didn't happen? And but that's he's imagining it. So is he hallucinating this too? Is, so this is my thought. We don't really have a good idea. Like, okay, we have some idea of like time frame, but we don't know if it's reliable, right? Because it goes, he's outside, and then all of a sudden, like a light switch, it's dark. I think that they are cleaning his his apartment, and he doesn't like when people do that. And they forcibly made him clean his apartment by turning the water off, so he had to come out and get water. I think he actually had to leave his apartment to get water. So I think they did that to make him clean the apartment because they wanted to see if he could actually go. Like, I think, okay, this gets to the ending. So we'll just say it right now. His mom owns the apartment and it's a, from what I saw on the poster, it's a fully staffed 24 seven, like adult living situation where people that need help have helpers there. And I think that they needed to do drastic measures and the mom directed them to do so to make sure that he is taking care of the way he should be. So I think that the ransacking is them like either turning over his apartment like a jail cell or cleaning it or something to see if the bags are in there, like seeing if they can get him to where he needs to go. Like it's all his mom pushing him like a puppet master. But see, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I think that he, here's, I guess here's where I disagree with that. I don't think she was doing that to help him. I think she's doing everything she does is to test him. Yeah, for sure. Not not to help That's him. That's fair. Yeah, I, I can see that. So, you know, she, the, the mom does own the building and it's it's like a like a rehab yeah. facility uh, essentially. So it's I don't know. It, it again it just it all comes around to, you know, if it is unreliable narrator, it's so far um, off of what's actually happening yeah that that i that i think it it becomes less enjoyable i i think i like the idea of unreliable narrator um i think it has issues you know because then that's what you end up discussing is what's real and what's not but i think it falls apart if you don't leave clues and if you don't leave plausible explanations for the people watching it Mm. because at, at this point like your explanation while it's sound and i like it it's still there's there's no clue in there. Oh yeah, your grasp is draws. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, it's a big stretch. It's like the yeah. opposite of what happened, which is I mean maybe is is how it would go down. Yeah. But yeah, I I find it very interesting, but I find it very hard to read into it. Uh, and I'm curious, like if there if there would be clues there. Yeah. Um, for the record, what we were saying, yeah, her mom, his mom owns the building. What I read the ending that we saw was as her company produced a shitload of drugs and now they were producing halfway houses but i read that as like he was an addict of some sort because he got fucked up on his mom's company's medications and he's living there but it's just a shitty like halfway house Mm -hmm. i I didn't read it as like actually a nice place that he's living in i read it's not as bad as it was but like a just like a rundown place, sure. Uh, and yeah, it, but it doesn't track. It doesn't track with the ex with what happened, as, as Jake was saying, like of them actually tearing the apartment apart. Yeah, like that doesn't make sense in a in a real world in a real world with an unreliable narrator. Like I don't see a way that that parallels. But if you're so paranoid and anxious that you don't want to leave your apartment, and you think all these people are going to attack you when you leave your apartment, what do you think you're going to mm-hmm. feel if you leave your apartment door unlocked? That's like the thing I believe you think like is what happen, he's right? seeing, like them all sneaking in. Yeah. Like the unreliable narrow part of like all of them like sneaking into the room. Like that totally tracks. But the end result of mm. what his sees in his apartment, he comes in and there's shit smeared on the walls and everything's yeah. destroyed. Like what is he really seeing? Is he seeing a pristine apartment? <laughs> and and like he, that's been clean but not to his liking? Yeah, that, that's it comes down to the fact that if this is all unreliable narrator then he's also constantly throughout the movie having massive hallucinations. Yeah. Like intense uh, hallucinations. And which would explain why that computer monitor works with a shoe in it, but it worked just fine, didn't it? (laughs) The the other thing that 
struck me as odd was so he's locked out right Mm -hmm. he doesn't have his key he sleeps outside and then he goes in through the broken glass because these these people that ransacked his apartment when they left they just crashed through the door and broke the glass on the door so that's how he's able to walk back in Mm -hmm. so then the the explanation then i guess if it's unreliable narrator is he had his keys the whole time and the door isn't really broken, and it's only later that he realizes that he actually has his key and he could just walk in. Or it's a staffed building and someone buzzed him in. But what happened earlier then? Somebody was off. They, they, let they were in. told to keep him out, maybe. You know, things mm. like that. Yeah. It's the mom. Yeah, right? it's just, there's not enough evidence in the movie. Like, that's fair. Like, that's what we're saying. I like an unreliable narrator movie, but like there, it has to track. Yeah, yeah I, I I agree. There's a... And, yeah, and I, it I don't want you to be like, oh, okay. I want you to be like, oh, shit. Mm. Like, of course, that's what it was. Mm-hmm. But instead, it's like we're making excuses for the movie. Yeah. That's right. That's my feeling. Bo gets back into his apartment, and he can't book a flight. His car just declined. Then his mom calls. Then, then he calls his mom, and the call is answered by a UPS guy. And they have this long conversation and call back and forth a couple times, and there's a body on the floor with no head or face. And the police are on the way. The chandelier fell on her head and smashed it. And Bo, it's it's Bo's mom. So he's losing it, and he has a really hard time doing anything. And then he finally gets into the tub, huge balls, got to mention that, and tries to call his therapist. There's a man holding himself up above him that sweats on him. And that's when he realized someone was there. And then we see the spider crawl onto the guy's head, and they freak out and fall, and they roll around in the tub naked. And Bo runs out of the front of his apartment naked, and he sees the serial killer from the news. And then he runs to a cop, and the cop's going to shoot him because he just tells him to get down, and he won't, and he won't. And then he runs into the street and gets hit by a truck. For my my one immediate critique of that, Bo followed everything that the cop said to do. Yeah, yes. yeah that's what yes. I was going to say, too. To he won't, he won't. He absolutely did. Yeah, to a T. Say To a T. Yeah. Like, everything he did, he was doing. And he told him he was doing it. And the cop was like, ah, oh, don't make me do it, man. Yeah, it was It was kind of, I want to go back and watch and see what the cop's face was. Cause he was like, don't make me do this. And for a second, I was like, I was like, ah, he seems kind of pumped. <laughs> like, he seemed kind of yeah. jazzed about yeah. it. Yeah, he was a bit too quick to pull the gun obviously yeah obviously that that yeah yeah uh i do like the first thing the tub is oh he goes in and checks the whole apartment and looks and it just goes along with like what i was thinking is maybe the thing of just like in this world it follows the logic of whatever the worst case scenario it is it is the one thing he doesn't think to check is like the light well above his tub and of course that's where one person's left because he goes in and sweeps the apartment before he shuts the door and that's the one place he doesn't think to look. So that's where a person is. It's just like whatever can go wrong goes wrong. True. I saw another explanation, and I don't think I agree with it. But um, it, it was somebody who was uh, on on the side of you know, okay, this is all uh, just Bo exaggerating everything, his reality. And they said there was no guy that what he just saw was the spider. Mm. Oh. and then and then and so to him, you know it shows it to us as the guy but that really what he just saw up there was the spider that makes sense and that's why he freaked out and ran out yeah yeah yeah, I buy that. yeah. so bo wakes up all and, the way out yeah 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 okay, good. bo wakes up in another room clothed to a dream that we've seen before of a woman making odd animal noises towards a bath ready for someone and a boy not wanting to get in Bo wakes up in what looks like a kid's room with an IV and a help button. He pushes the button and a woman who was driving the truck comes inside. He's been asleep for two days and was stabbed by the serial killer, but seems okay. Grace and her... I said husband, but we don't really know. Or do we know? No, she she, 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 she introduces him as uh, her husband. Okay. Her husband, yeah. All right. Grace and her husband, Roger, who is a surgeon that took care of him in the meantime... They put a health monitor on his ankle and they tell him that his mom's head being gone was a dream. We see Bo, Roger, and Grace around the dinner table. There is a shrine to Nathan, their boy who died in action. Roger doles out drugs to the mom and Bo is dessert. Tony, a daughter, comes home during the dinner and meets Bo. Tony's room is where he's staying. They avoid using Nathan's room. Jeeves is another person who served with Nathan and definitely has PTSD and needs meds. Bo's testicles are distended. 
So here's another reason why I think this home that they're in is another facility. Mm. I think that um, uh, Nathan's the presiding, or sorry, Roger's the presiding doctor. I think Grace is potentially a patient there. I think that um, definitely Tony is and Jeeves is. Uh, and I think that the big thing that tipped me off at the beginning is when Bo is handed the phone by Grace. She says, dial nine to get out. And that's like mm. commercial real uh, estate. I do remember house. that. I was yeah. like, oh, they're in, they're in not a house. Like that kind of stuck out to me. So I think that that was the first kind of like tear away moment for Bo of like, this is different. The, um, on, again, I don't know if it was the same one as the previous one or not, but another explanation of this that I saw had roughly the same idea. They said that it was a, a hospital, that Bo was in a hospital with the doctor, the wife was the nurse, uh, mm. the daughter was a patient, mm -hmm. and they said that, uh, oh, what's his name? Jeeves. The PTSD guy. Jeeves. Jeeves. They said uh, Jeeves was a security guard. Oh, mm. interesting. I buy that. And, and uh, this... This interpretation, I think I'm a little more open to. Um, a lot of it seems to line up, but again, it, I don't, it's, it's, it's a lot more, I'm a lot more forgiving on this part, but uh, I, I still have that overarching complaint of uh, it's, it's, it's too surreal for everything to just be explained by he's seeing things differently. Sure. Yeah, there is a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like what happened with the paint, man? Oh, what what yeah. happened? What I happened? Think, I think she did it. With what? I think she it was, got some paint. No, I think it was meds. Mm. Yeah, that's I just I I can't go on with a whole movie where everything is swapped out for something else. It's crazy. Maybe my my mental capacity is just not there. It's crazy. Like and, every and, and single what about thing the, what is about the TV out. channel? I think that yeah. was a security that he, that, that, that he fast forwards. That part's weird. That part's I can't. Tell I, that. Yeah, that was one part I pulled out where I was like, I love, I love surrealism, but like it has to come back to something. We just dropped that on the floor. We never talked about it again. But it was he actually saw what the happened. future. He saw everything. Yes, he, did. Yeah. he saw the future. Yeah. That's not okay to not go back to. He can't. Yeah. Go well, they back did to go back to it when it happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. 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 <laughs> Bo calls. But no. Yeah. That's uh, future hospital. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, I actually really like this part of the movie. I yes. think the, I, I think this, if we're splitting it into those four acts, I think the second and the third act are my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, if they would have stayed in the house the whole time, I think this movie would have been incredible. I yeah, think there was a in lot. In house? Or in this house? In this no, house. in the suburban house. This movie would have been I, fun. Yeah, I really like the f creepy feeling that the house gave me until everything exploded. <laughs> like the first half of the suburban house, I was like, "Oh fuck!" Like I'm on board. Like yep. where are we going? The yeah. problem is that we didn't go anywhere. He left, and that was it. <laughs> we had a journey. Bo calls an attorney about his mom to see if she's dead, and she is. He's very mad at her, he, or him. He's just a dick. Jeeves is reliving his battle days in the backyard as Bo is on the phone. His mom can't be buried until he's there in a suit with a eulogy six hour drive away from where they are they'll take that'll take him a couple days they're going to take him tomorrow tony takes meds and films all of this tony goes out that's the daughter goes out to or patient jesus trailer and both thinks they're plotting against him so that would buy into the security thing is like tony trying to like get bo to be on that a series of events leads to Bo having to stay another day. Roger and Grace leave. There's a note under Bo's water that talks about stop incriminating yourself. There's a new person outside the grounds of the house staring at Bo. Bill Hader found the body. <laughs> Bo's mom was a badass CEO lady. Elaine is a worker of Mona. Elaine was the girl from the photo earlier in the room. Uh, Tony and a friend are taking Bo home. Her friend records Bo and they blackmail him into taking a hit of a joint with three things in it. That was a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have anything for the stop incriminating yourself? Nope. <laughs> it's another thing that I just is left on the floor. Paranoia. I, mean, I have paranoia. nothing for that. Just paranoia. Like you can see that. See, he's just fully hallucinating. Then. Yeah. That didn't happen at all. That yeah. did not happen. No. Yeah. That's just that's insane to me. I to know. See, isn't it? Like, an unreal. Yeah. 
There are I people like this though. It's like mental health. Like there are people that are like this, which is wild. Yeah. So I could. That's, that's why I, mean, I could see it. Nothing is outside the realm of like what your brain can do to you so far. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead. I think at this point and just bring in stuff from all parts of the movie because I'm assuming anyone that's listening or watching has seen it. If you're right? this far it's in, not, you're really this is it. not making any sense. To them. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. So. Uh, we, we learn later that these people were all employees yes. of, uh, of, the, of the mom and of the company. Mm-hmm. And uh, at one point, Tony gets in like this, this rage and she's like, you failed the test. You've already failed the test. This is all tests coming from the mom. So again, I don't, I don't see that happening if this were like a hospital. Mm. But, but then, then the note makes sense. Say this is just a suburban house with these wacky characters, but these characters are on the payroll of the mom. Mm. Just another test for Bo mm. to, to test his love for her and, and how far he's willing. Is he willing to go to the funeral? Interesting. Um, and, and, and the note just serves like stop incriminating yourself. Like, and then same thing when you, you know, when the girl's screaming at him, you, you already failed the test. Yeah, that's true. She does say that. Like that's what, that's what she's talking about it- is, yeah, it yeah. Does. Is, is is the mom's just trying to see if he would break, you know, break Reference free of this it. and go? I, I think that is right after when the surgeon, the the dad postpones uh, going to the funeral, and they they call out, and it was so. I actually rewinded like three times this conversation where he's like, "Oh, I have a surgery, I have to go," and then he says, "Like that's okay, right?" And Bo mumbles but i had the subtitles and i had it rewinded three times because i did not hear what he said he said how did you get me here oh and the surgeon says surgeon says are you sure because you can say if it's not okay bo didn't say okay he said how did you get me here interesting and he just like set this so the surgeon's like you know you gotta i'm gonna it'll be tomorrow and then he's like is that okay and bo mumbles to himself how did you get me here and he says are you sure it's okay don't just say that like you know it's your decision and then Bo doesn't say anything Mm. and if it did not occur to me that that's what they were referring to as the test but all reference the incriminating and the and the test do not get referred to until after that and then in the after scene that is taken as a thing of his guilt yeah Oh, so it's sense. like that all tracks with the this all just being the mom setting it up to test him, yeah, and the daughter and the mom being unwilling participants who are trying to help him. Mm, yeah, that is that's that's levels of ins- insanity in real life that is See, hard to fathom. Yeah, I I don't I don't think the daughter's trying to help him. Mm. I think the daughter's just a delinquent. Well, the daughter's um, also like, uh, like emotionally not helped by her parents because they can't get over Nathan. Yeah, yeah, is, yeah. The the daughter's fucked up in her <laughs> yeah. own way. Like yeah. I, when when we see her, it's so funny because like she just she comes in, she's she mouths off a bit, and then she just immediately downs a bunch of pills, mm. and then her, her in Wh- plain view of her parents and her dad is a surgeon. And literally all they say is, don't mix those. Yeah. So yeah. so they don't have a problem with her popping pills. Apparently this is a fight that's already lost. Yeah. But yeah. they're just like, oh, don't mix those. True. Which, if they're in the mom's employ, is more confusing. Yeah. It's been very clear that the mom's company is like producing. They're a big pharma company that's like ruining people's lives. <laughs> for sure. Like. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's all that. That's very confusing. Are they addicts and, that she's paying to do this, and no. they're both and just I guess, unstable addicts in this house, or three I, unstable addicts? I don't know. We don't know about the daughter, or I don't even think the wife. We know that the surgeon, the dad, is yep. was an employee, yep. mm-hmm. but the, the others it doesn't specify. True. We but just it, see his again, it, face it, on it the wall. It doesn't make employees. sense how they're acting if they're not under her employ, or if this world's just not crazy. Hmm. Like, it make I sense. mean, they're going to get a buttload of money from her. So, hey, whole family, go along with this, you know? 
Well, no, yeah, I'm saying, like, but that's I cu- I count that as under her employee. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. they know what's going on. No, they fair. know that they're doing something. Yeah, that's yeah. We're on a cruise with Bo. But that's gonna... insane. That's insane. <laughs> See, and and I think that that's where I settled on this movie as being partially unreliable narrator and seeing his view of the world partially you know what weird things are happening because strings are being pulled by the mom and then partially just an art an artistic choice of having it be surreal i think for me that's that's the most satisfying explanation for this film is that a lot of the surrealism is just artistic choice Mm -hmm. i agree with that my my brain wants to shove it into one of two either it's an unreliable narrator in a real world or this world is mad and i want one of those two and like just saying oh yeah it's just artistic flair is unsatisfying to me that's part of my problem here because your balls aren't big enough nate (laughs) we're on a cruise with Bo and what looks like his mom back in the day it looks like elaine from the picture he discusses the types of girls he's into with his mom we see what looks like tony and her friend go back into the yeah all that all the bombs. She was driving that comic. I'm pretty sure she was driving. She oh, said, yeah. I've seen you looking at girls like that. Yeah. She's discussing what kind of girls he likes. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And it's horrible. Yeah, he's he's he was very uncomfortable with the conversation too, even. Yeah. Pre Bo and his mom are in the same bed talking about Elaine. Bo is back in the house. Elaine and Bo are ripped apart by Elaine's mom. Jeez goes after Bo in the house. Tony riled him up. Grace keeps almost telling Bo something. She leaves and tells him channel 78 on the TV. It's a camera pointed at him. He could rewind, fast forward, and everything. Tony takes him into Nathan's room to paint it pink. Tony drank uh, the pink. Uh, this is the, you took such detailed notes. Yeah. And I just have to call out that you described him looking forward in time as he can rewind, fast forward, and everything. Yeah. It sounds like you're excited describing a VCR. Yeah. No, he fast forwards in time. He sees yes. the future. Yes, he's he's watching this this CCTV. He's you know he's told you know hey to to watch this channel. He's like that's weird. So he checks it and it's live. He starts rewinding. I thought what was going to happen was he's going to rewind back and see something fucked up that happened overnight yeah. or the day before or something. Yeah. All of that's a sudden he starts fast forwarding, and when and we we immediately see oh because he gets caught up and then he fast forwards still and then like you see the daughter coming into the room so you're like. He's just fast forward into the future, and then he keeps pressing fast forward, and it just starts skipping scene by scene, and it's it's a bunch of strange images, but he's clearly fast forwarding into the future. You know, and you know what's interesting about anxiety? So they say like depression is worrying about the past, anxiety is like worrying about the future. So it makes sense to me that someone who had the ability to fast forward would fast forward and like keep going. Yeah, and not his, look at his what happened. Thought goes him. there. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I thought that was interesting. That was a good idea. Yeah. So Bo... Uh, no, I just, I just like, for future reference, for people watching this, when I complain about Ben's, Ben's summarizing, this is the example. Just, he can rewind and fast forward and everything. And that's all you were going to say. Yeah, that's fine. That's all you need to know. You know why? You know why? Because it kills the narrative of unreliable narrator. <laughs> because there's no explanation for why he can manifest clairvoyance. Or is he thinking about all the steps ahead and knowing that they're going to go as bad as they can? And that's what he's envisioning. He's so anxious that he can see the worst possible outcome. I can do that. And Every then... time I think about getting on a plane, I can see it crashing. <laughs> and I'm like, yep, all right. So if I was going to fast but forward can... my anxiety, that's but, what I'd see. But he actually you envision yourself exactly on a rowboat? <laughs> well, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm going to end up on a rowboat. Right? If it's all from his point of view, it happened the way he saw it. Boom. Yeah. All right. No, no, no. Moving I, on. I, I, I do. I, I resisted the temptation to rewind because it, it starts going where you just get like eight scenes in a row that happen later in the movie. Yeah. And I can't remember what those scenes are. But like, he's in the forest. He's at her house. He's at the mom's house. Like, he is mm-hmm. accurately seeing these things happen. Well, he knows what he's going to do next. So Grace keeps almost telling Bo something. She leaves and tells him Channel 78 on the TV. It's a camera pointed at him. You can fast forward, rewind, and everything. <laughs> Tony takes him to Nathan's room to paint it pink. Tony then started drinking the paint and died. Grace comes in upset and blames Bo. Grace six Jeeves on Bo, who is running away. 
He hits a tree and gets knocked down again. Bo's traveling through the woods in the dark. He stumbles upon a lady with a lantern singing. She takes him to what we are presented as a hippie compound. It's a renaissance theme. So the guy in the photo uh, at the beginning of the uh, movie when he's like, oh, this is my dad. It does look like the guy that's like creeping on him that we see in the mm -hmm. forest and in the backyard of the house. So I think that could be his dad, actually. Like legitimately mm -hmm. could be his dad. Um, For yeah. the record, that picture of his dad that he has, the one picture of his dad, it's messed up. Yeah. Because it's, it's blurry. It's like dual exposure. Yeah, because like you can you can see the dad like side profile, and then it's also blurry. You can see him looking forward, yeah, it's so cool. it's like it, it like caught him right in the middle of looking because you can kind of see shadows yeah. of both. And he's hammering, but there's nothing that he's hammering, and he's hammering into a brick wall. So it's like he's huh. trying to hammer a nail into a brick wall. As you do. So I have no That's explanation for that, but it's got to mean something, right? Yeah, um, facial recognition among, I think among those with paranoid schizophrenia is rough. So maybe, again, maybe the picture isn't actually blurry. He just doesn't remember what his dad looks like. So he doesn't even see the face. That's a stretch. But I like that, that he was, I didn't notice he was banging into a brick wall. That's kind of interesting too. So we get to the play. This is a cool, I like this part a lot. The animation was cool. The visual style was cool. I like that. Like very Wizard and, of Oz vibes. And the, the story itself. Yeah, it was um, rad. We, we, we talked a bit uh, earlier about how, how this part is, is almost a story within the story. Uh, th that, that this section with the play in the forest could be its own, what, 10 minute short film? And it might have been. Because yeah. there is a movie called Bo by Ari Aster that stars the dad from what? wrong with the johnsons about this story so maybe that's where really it yeah. oh, okay i'll try to find it after this he was just like i really want this to a wider audience to see this yeah i need it more it was people. cool it was cool as shit yeah i i love the yeah i don't know the time loop i don't in the end i don't have an explanation for it but i don't care for this part like, right it's just fun yeah so the play is about grieving one's lost parents and being able to move on. The choice of venture forth or stay with what you know. The character tries to leave but is chained. He uses an axe to break the chains. It switches to Bo as the main character, pushing through to his own new life. He finds a town, learns a trade, earns a living, eats food he earns, builds a house, cultivates the land and lives off it, makes new friends, meet a woman, each guided by the other. Gifts of life will multiply and you will have children, three sons, teaching them what you know. The therapist is still there. A huge flood storm will destroy your town, and you will be carried away by it. You and your family will be separated, and you will end up in a strange country, looking for your family for days, weeks, months, and not find them. No one will speak your language. You're just almost reading this word for word. Yeah, I wrote it down basically word for word. No one will speak your language to get work, and you are treated as a criminal. A village with a plague will ID you as the cause. You will argue for your innocence. You will wonder if you actually are guilty. You flee an attack. Dog pursues you. And you keep a log, many logs of your adventure for years and years. Every tree plant and bird song you will know. You will abandon comforts and have new ways of seeing. You look for your family until your life fades away into that of a ghost, wondering if they ever existed. When frail and old, you will collapse from exhaustion and will confess everything. After which the earth will be replaced by good water. Sleep will come untroubled. Distant trumpets will awaken you at the foot of your village. No one knows you, but your home waited for you. And they had a play that was about him. So the whole play comes to the head here, and it's like old boat. You, you cut off the best part. I, I, th I, th the I, I thought so, but I think he's about to talk about okay, that right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. Old Bo comes back to the play. I was re-entranced. So it's like we're back at the play again, but it's old Bo there. The one uh, from the story, and there's three kids hearing this story, and he stands up and says, "It's my story." And the boys recognize him as their father, and they greet each other and learn all about things about themselves. And we learn that Bo's dad died by coming. The minute he came in, inside of his in mom, the most horrifying scene of the movie to make <laughs> him the, no the oh my god he came and go died. ahead. And his grandfather did that, and his great-grandfather did that. So he thought he was going to do it the same way. And the boys were talking with him and said, well, da da 
how come you didn't die? How did you have us? And then it kind of like snaps Bo out of it and he's back to just being normal Bo. And he gives the porcelain doll that was meant for his mom to the girl that was the lantern singing lady. Um, so Bo knows that he can't have sex to completion. So the kids aren't his. And he's back in reality. So part of me and... I, I think we, all three of us will agree that this that this scene, this story within the story was just mind-blowing. It was sick. Mm, mm-hmm. uh, visually, the narrative, everything about it was great. Um, immediately afterwards, I, I sort of interpreted it as, like, you know, you're ever watching a show or a movie and, and you sort of, you do like the self-insert. You start seeing yourself as the protagonist or, you know, whatever. And then, and so you can, you kind of like daydream along or you imagine that or you see yourself in it. And so I, I saw sort of that as happening because he's in this story, he's seeing all of this, you know, stuff that he, he couldn't do. Like, um, like very, first of all, very masculine stuff. I, I think a lot of, a lot of this movie is just about Bo's lack of masculinity, he's, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, this this guy like learns a trade and has a family and, and, you know, does all this. And then, and so Bo's sort of imagining himself as that character doing all of that. And so he, and he gets all caught up in it, but even he, it, it comes to head when he realizes that even in this like imagination of his, he can't imagine himself as, as ever having sex because he's afraid that he'll die literally. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and that that's what breaks the illusion. And then mm. he's just back as normal watching the play. That's how I interpreted it when I saw it. Agreed. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep. The man who has been staring at Bo finally has a conversation with him. He tells his, him his father's alive, and he knows his father after he was born. He says he worked for Bo's family. He's so happy to see him. The beeping gets louder as Jeeves re- arrives. He starts killing people, and everyone freaks out. Bo's dad tells him to run as Jeeves launches a grenade in his attack. Bo's ankle monitor shocks him as he's running away after Jeeves has a button to incapacitate him. And Jeeves is killed in the process. Bo has a dream about the tub again. The kid asks where his dad is, and Mommy says dad is dead. The kid wants his daddy. The boy in the tub is not wanting daddy. The other kid is put up in the attic, never to be spoken of again, according to the mom. Bo is the kid in the tub. Bo wakes up near a highway and tries to hitchhike. He's picked up by a guy and finally makes it to Wasserton, where his mom is being buried. He arrives at his That mother. was... Uh, I'll, I'll interrupt there for two quick things. One, the the reveal at that scene in the dream... Because the whole time you thought that the, the kid in, that we see in the dream was Bo talking to the mom. Then after that scene, you're like, oh, does, did Bo have a brother? Mm-hmm. Uh, is, you know, is that what we're seeing? Because you know, you're, you're seeing it from the... Cause you, oh, you see the, the camera shake. Because yep. the, the mom turns to the camera and asks a question. Do you, do you want to, are you wondering about your father too? And the head shakes. So then you're like, oh, that's not Bo. And again, a uh, little help from the subtitles here. Um, and maybe not help. Uh, yeah, I confusion. think sometimes, so, yeah. sometimes confusion. I think sometimes the subtitles are wrong or misleading. Uh, subtitles refer to that kid as Bo's twin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is, I think it's interesting that the the hitchhiking just happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It, that's it's very no words are spoken. Yeah, it's very antithetical to Bo as a character, and it's very against kind of every theme of the movie. Um, kind of works out. Yeah, we find like the one thing he's not anxious about is like people driving yeah. him around. <laughs> and well, it, it but it makes no you know. Well, Bo should be terrified of hitchhiking. Yeah. But, and, and it going with out. any other theme of this movie, but also maybe that hitchhiker is, might be the only person that he sees in this movie that's not an employee of his mom. Oh, mm. true. So that's when, that's when things just go normal. He just finds a random guy, hitchhikes with him, and things go just fine. Wow. Yeah. You're right. Damn nice. He arrives at his mother's home and sees people milling about. The funeral has already happened, and the people are packing up to leave. There's a video inside. The figurine is also a statue outside his mom's house. He walks into the house with a video playing of the funeral. Bo is the lone surviving son. No plaque for the other son, next to his dad and mom for their burial. It's an open casket with no head. Bo goes through the home with the funeral playing. 
Bo was the face for a lot of drugs his mom's company sold. Lived in the building owned by his, the company with full-time help available. The pictures of the people from her company include photos of Elaine and Roger. She had a picture of Bo in his apartment on the phone, <laughs> taken from an odd angle like a security camera. That's why I think like none of that stuff in the apartment could have happened because she had security camera footage of him. She had a photo of him on the wall, like on the phone, like a picture of that. And that felt like, oh yeah, she's watching. Like she was tracking him. I believe that. And she had a photo of him when she wasn't there, like a security camera took it. Yeah. I mean, j- the- just because there's a security camera doesn't mean people can't get in. True. Yeah, that's right. Elaine comes into the house as Bo is home by himself. She didn't recognize him. They rekindle their old times. They go on to have very awkward sex. He comes, and he doesn't die. She dies after she comes, though. Here's my read on this. This didn't happen, but he did have sex with either a sex doll or, at worst, like a stuffed animal, and that's why his mom was so disgusted Mm. and why she just said, get rid of this thing. It wasn't a person. It was. I don't think Elaine was ever there with Bo. I think Bo wanted that to be what happened. And hmm. he just imagined it. I'm I'm not convinced yet, but I will say that would because not only did she die, which storyline wise makes no sense mm. unless It's like the opposite you know, of what happened to him. You know, he thought he was gonna die, but actually she died, which is like the next most terrifying thing that can happen when you have sex. So that was scared of it. But but th- I I think what what makes like the surrealism from that, besides like, okay, what are the odds that she has the same thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Which, um, she, I mean, I don't know if that's even a real thing that people, I, maybe. I have no idea. I don't think so. But, heart, yeah, I mean, but, a heart murmur, but, sure, why not? But, maybe uh, one person died. I'm sure some people have died. Yeah, climbing, yeah, think, but, yeah like, but it's oh, not like not a, something that's general. passed down. Well, yeah. and then, big balls, maybe. <laughs> but then, uh, so the other thing too is, so then once she dies, she is, comically immediately induced with rigor mortis. Rigor mortis. She is yeah. stuck. Yeah. And like, you know, like a sex doll. So, in a so weird th- position. I mean, he just put so, her up there. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. So that's why I that's why I'm thinking, okay, you might be onto something with that. She wasn't really there that it might have been some inanimate object because to me that would best explain why she literally freezes up and they mm-hmm. carry her off and it's she yeah. hmm. she says take this away and feed so and so just horrible. that was odd too yeah, yeah. she said something yeah. like they were going to feed she said that course. no she, yeah she, she, she said feed so and so and she didn't say feed it too but like she said take was this she away about the dad? feed so and so she was talking yeah, about that's, dad that's, she? I'm pretty sure yeah oh my god <sighs> I'm pretty sure that's what they're getting at. So his mom, as we know now, was watching and shows up. She gets rid of the sheets. Uh, Martha died, not the mom. Martha's the housekeeper. And Bo knew immediately because of various markings on Martha's body. Um, She was recording Bo's conversations with the therapist the mom was. And we find out that an identical other him who we see in the dream is in the attic. So Bo's confronted with all this information and then whoa, whoa, whoa. the moment from so, the dream happens and she throws Bo up into the attic and as he's doing it, as she's doing this, Bo says, this is just like my dream and she says, it's not a dream, it's a memory, you idiot and slams the door and I was like, ooh, that's nice. That's a nice touch. Uh, she wasn't just recording the conversations with the therapist. She, There was a grand reveal. They brought the therapist out yeah. who is even more creepy because he's enjoying silent. every second of this. Yeah. Silent he's, and creepily smiling. And because uh, th- the, the therapist was in on it too. Yes. And, and, and the therapist had detailed notes about, oh, all the bad things that Bo said. So at this point, you know, you, you, you see on that wall of employee. That's the other thing I'd like to get a closer look at. Mm. Um, you know, a, a couple of faces stood out to me on that wall of employees. But mm. I, f- I feel like there were more faces that I saw, and I'm like, I f- you know, even just random characters, like mm. side characters, um, like every, every part of Bo's world was, was under his mom's control. Yeah, I, I paused it at that point, and I, I actually got it up 
now because I saw Nathan Lane's character on there. I paused it and looked, and I didn't recognize him. But I bet like most of the people you see were probably like extras in the yeah. in the background scenes or the theater company troupe. Like they might they might just like repeat. It's like Wizard of Oz, right? The same people that happened mm, in the first area. Use. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. For the record, I, I pulling up the scene that he like briefly glances at the housing. Uh, it does say so. It says rehabilitation neighborhoods devoted to housing and supporting residents who abused our products full-time resident assistant provided in every neighborhood. So it's, it, that doesn't give me the impression of a staffed hospital. It says full-time resident assistant provided. So that's like mm. one person. Yeah. yeah so you, you'd have a maintenance man or it's, whatever. Yeah. It's, the dude it's we like see a, yeah. it's like a halfway house. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. We find out it wasn't a dream. It was a memory. She locked him up there and there's a man there. I hated that line. It's funny what you said. Like when she said like, it's it, it's not a dream, you idiot. It's a memory. Yeah. Like that is such like a cheesy line of but like if, expository dialogue. As from her a character though, it felt so movie. like so spiteful. Like you can't even figure this fucking thing out. She's so yeah, because she's evil. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But what does that even mean? Is is he? To me, I was like, is he reliving a traumatic memory of getting put in the attic for talking back? Yeah, that's my read. Yeah. And that works with an unreliable narrator and doesn't work with the insanity that ensues. Yeah, exactly. So he goes up there and there's another person that looks like him but older, tied up, locked up. And then there's a giant penis monster. A six foot tall penis. Literally just a gigantic penis with a face and like claws. And he can talk because he's... And it's because it's funny because it echoes from the play. Yep. When old man Bo is reunited with his children. Yep. And it, yeah. it very much was like that. Like, Bo, don't be afraid. Oh, Bo, I'm so happy. What a wild time. This is where the movie lost me. <laughs> Every time Ari Aster goes into an attic or upstairs at the end of a movie, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the attic door fall, uh, Jeeves shows up and is attacked by the giant penis in a really cool scene, which me and Nate talked about earlier, where he gets stabbed through the head. With like a penis claw, and that was actually rad. That was a cool scene. Yeah, Starship Troopers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, like directly into the head. Yeah. So they go back. Bo falls out of the attic down the stairs, and the therapist and the mom are there. And the mom the therapist drags him with a big smile on his face. Oh yeah, the mom is like, "That's your dad. The giant penis monster is your dad." Never mentions that he's a giant penis monster. Oh, and he says, "She says like, see what I had to go through to have you, and like all this motherly guilt that was like just." dropped on him um yeah. and then he just chokes her out and she falls through a table and doesn't breathe from what we can see and then he runs away again so so he he chokes her you know uh, and then he lets go and she's she's not dead he did not choke her to death no uh and she's like oh, you know and she's like oh, i'm so sorry i didn't mean to do that i'm so and and then she just presumably dead she just collapses collapses yeah. dead into this tank um one one of the things i read said that she died from the shock mm-hmm. that he that he did that and that he would like stand up to her like that which Courageous seemed the most plausible to me because yeah they, i, I want to make that clear he did not choke her to death he choked her stopped horrified at what he had done and then she collapsed dead yeah there could be something there about a crush windpipe. Yeah. I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor, but. <laughs> Neither is anyone else in this movie. Uh, yeah. So he runs around <laughs> and then finds a boat and then goes in the middle of this lake and we keep going and going and going. And he's in this cave and he's in an arena where the lawyer and his mom are heading up a hearing on his guilt. Um, he feeds fish and birds, but not humans that are begging on the street. His defense is on some 1-800 defense lawyer guy that you can barely hear and is way over in the side and like he's literally can't defend himself um he's presented with his faults and his sins uh including letting his friends sniff his mom's panties when he was 15 so he's basically like every bad thing that he thinks he did that he feels guilty about is being presented to him as like without context you're the worst person in the world as someone with anxiety i feel like would would see those yeah this is something that very much reads to me as like 
you know, just something that someone with anxiety is going through. The, yeah. So, yeah, interestingly, I think this this part of the movie is almost crystal clear. It's like his own internal debating with himself. Yeah. And, you know, on the one side is this this shabby lawyer. You can't even see him. You can barely hear him. And that's that's him trying to defend himself. And on the other side is, like, even in these situations that weren't his fault for whatever reason, he still feels the guilt and he still blames himself for all of this stuff. Um, yeah. So, interestingly, this was... I had... I felt like I had no questions about this part of the movie. Yeah. So he's on this boat, motor catches fire, he can't leave the boat, and then the boat flips over, and he's stuck to the boat before he flips over. He can't jump out of it. And he flips over, Very and we weird hear... explosion. Yeah, yeah, it was strange. Yeah. And then we hear his mom cry out for him. So yeah. I think you could read it a few different ways. It's all in his head, obviously. Uh, he actually did get on a boat, and then flipped it and drowned, and that or like ran into something, and he couldn't get out. Like the act, there was an accident we didn't see that actually happened. And his mom saw it, um, but yeah, I kinda, that's the end of the movie. Because I was so stuck on the the suicide note, I kind of read it as a possible like suicide oh. by pills and like sure. regret, sure, like just like kind of yeah, I maybe, don't know. There was yeah, a lot maybe, of tub and pill imagery. Maybe he didn't make it out of the uh, attic. Maybe he didn't make it out of his tub in the beginning. Like that's where oh. this where I have trouble with the movie. Like uh, I was like. At one point, at the end, I was like, is this all just like a like end-of-life hallucination of shit Damn. going down? Like, I don't know. Well, I don't like that explanation. No. I don't, because I would be <laughs> mad if that was the explanation. The, but, like... the Again, it's, it, this wasn't my thought. This was from one that I had read. They said that he did die when he came. Oh, and, that, and, that, and that's when he died. <laughs> and then everything since then was... That... I like that better. Yeah. So I just I could track like if he died like the last we see unreliable narrator like badness in him going across the street into his apartment, and then he writes a suicide note, and then from then on, the, all the stuff that I'm like this doesn't make any sense happens, and I'm like did he just like commit suicide and this is like his last, you know, like because that is after he disappointed his mom but before he finds out she's dead. I believe, mm -hmm. or no, he no, he found out she was dead when he went into the tub. But yeah, but any, but not when he's writing the suicide note at nope. the, that night. Nope. But yeah, I don't know. That was after he missed his flight. It's like what would have happened. So here's my here's my read on this movie. What we're watching up to about the last third, up until he realizes that it's not his mom mm. in the in the coffin. He is going through the five stages of grief. First one is anger. Right, he lives in a very angry world. Like the whole world around him is angry, like riled up. Um, and then it's denial. Like anger's already there, so like anger and denial are kind of one and the same. Denial is him, like obviously on the phone, not saying that his mom died. And then when he gets to the house after being hit by a car, they tell him it's in your dreams or whatever. And then it's bargaining. The whole time he's in that house with the suburbanites, he's bargaining with them to leave earlier. Like I need to leave. I need to go. I need to go. Um. Don't paint, don't do the drugs, don't delay in me leaving. And then there's depression, which is him seeing the life he could have had in that play. The whole play to me was depression. It was what could you have had? What did you lose out by living the way that you did? Who are you now? And then acceptance is him coming to the house and like finally being there. And then he snaps out of it when he realizes it's not his mom. And then it lost me from there. I don't know what it's about. <laughs> it's just weird. That's how I saw it. See, and and I don't know. That's um. I think it sort of leads to my my final summary and feelings on this movie is, um. You know, I said before. I, for me, the most satisfying explanation is it's it's a little bit of everything. It's a little bit unreliable narrator, a little bit uh, artistic choice, and then a little bit uh, just like the world is actually wacky because his mom's a psycho and is controlling everything. Mm -hmm. Um. But I, I think some parts are, are clearly one of those things. And a lot of parts could be, could be any of those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't see that as a good thing, mm -hmm. personally. Uh, I don't mind a, a bit of ambiguity in movies or a little bit of you don't know how it ended or you don't know. Um, I think this movie has 
too much of that to be fully satisfying. Okay. That's fair. Yeah, I think that's a fair... I would agree on most parts and, of that, yeah. And in spite of that, uh, visually great movie. I think it definitely yeah. has a lot of great moments. Uh, I still really enjoyed it, and I, I think that the discussion that you could have with anyone who has also seen this movie... Um, would make this movie worth watching. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of strange because I don't I don't think it was that good. I don't know that that's too simplified. I, I think it has major flaws. Yeah, I think it had a lot to say, but then ended up saying nothing, which is why I think you can discuss about it a lot. But at the end of the day, it's like, what did I get out of seeing this? I don't know. Like, yeah, and that's not a and not a good and way. It either. feels like two. It feels like three or four ideas. Uh, and we should have focused on one. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's the thing, because it's also one of those movies that no matter how much you discuss it, no matter how many different takes you read on it, uh, no one will ever know, except yeah. Yeah. maybe Ari Aster, if he did, ever decides to tell anyone. Yeah. But as a filmmaker, I don't think there's any reason why he would do that. No. Yeah. No. He did that with the movie, is what he's thinking, probably. I already told you what's going on. Yeah. It's all there. <laughs> I actually, I, I, when I looked for, like, you know, what is this movie about, breakdown, whatever, I, like, was scraping through an article really fast, and I saw something about Ari Aster saying he was worried it was too obvious, <laughs> and he just, everything was up there on the screen. And I was like, don't worry, bro. Yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> you got it. You're good. Yeah, if he ever listens to this, he's like, no, you guys nailed it. Like, you had it all. <laughs> you figured it That's out. That's it. <laughs> it's a big fuck you to people who try to figure out movies. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, shit, I forgot about the fast forwarding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait, wait. I was scrolling through my notes to make sure I didn't miss anything, and I'm so mad. I missed. No. Uh, at the beginning, I wrote, city is terrible. This is what your Republican relatives think cities are like. Yes. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Could not be more true. The first thing that popped into my head. Oh my god, lip tarts. Uh, what would you drink with this movie? I put water. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, spider water. Spider water. Uh, would you? I was, rec- I was. I was thinking like a some sort of soothing tea. Oh yeah, a little chai tea. Mm. Tea tea. Yeah, because because even even as a viewer, I'm like, I need to Ooh, calm down. Well, I need a break. Hot water from Nathan's mug. <laughs> paint, paint. Ooh, paint. Good one. <laughs> God, Don't that was actually brutal. Drink paint. Yep, another yeah. young, another young daughter being killed in a very horrifying way. Mm. Yep. Yay. I wonder what Ari Aster's family's like. <laughs> I was literally used to that, and I'm like, if he had like a little sister that died under mysterious circumstances, I know who did it. I think it's. <laughs> <laughs> she fell on the fork right in her eyeball Don't know what to or, or, or just his parents like people who's anyone who knows his parents who watch this movie are just like are you guys okay <laughs> yeah what are what friends what do you do like if he writes the script and sends it to his friends they're like do you what the fuck dude <laughs> like who do you send that to <laughs> um, so yeah I think our thoughts are maybe watch it but probably not you're okay if you don't I Honestly, I, I would I would recommend this. Well, here's the, you know, understanding that it's wacky, surreal, super long, yeah. and ha, you know, it's it's got a giant penis in it. You're not gonna tell your grandma to watch this movie, right? Um, Grandma's but, cool. <laughs> uh, but but for anyone who that that you think would be you know would be fine with these things, yeah. I think it is worth a watch. I, okay. I think it's it's a cool enough watch and it's an it's a cool enough story and I don't know I'm I'm in a weird place because normally with these movies I'm like fuck that but this one I'm like I still don't get it but it was it's worth a watch I think I would have really liked this movie as five one hour shorts as a mini series like first episode he's in the apartment second episode he's in the house third episode he's in the forest fourth episode he's at his mom's house fifth episode big reveal. I think I would have enjoyed it way more because I think it they could have said a little bit more with it. It feels like it's in between. I think I would have been pissed at that last episode. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I think if you want, if you want surrealism, there's better stuff. If you want uh, anxiety-inducing 
even this year, if you want anxiety inducing uh, suspense, there's a better movie out there. Yeah. Uh, and all my friends hate me. Like, oh, yeah. It, it was fine, but like, I think there's better use of your time, especially for a three hour movie. Yeah. That was, that's, a, that's a hard sell, three hours. I, I will say it. The three hours of it was uh, was well handled. There was constantly mm. stuff happening. The mm. the screen kept you engaged because there was no. And and they can do this with with the wacky surrealism of it, especially like in, in the in the first act when when they're at Bo's house, like all the graffiti. And mm. that's the thing too. Like I you remember going back to the graffiti. Penis is everywhere. Yeah, a lot of dicks. Right. I at first you think love the, the visual penis. storytelling in this yes. movie so much of it like the changes of time where it just flashes yeah uh, but yeah all the easter eggs i loved the deep like down to when he's at his mom's house and the uh, her mom's mom before she ever gets brought up the first time we see the portrait of the mom she's peering from behind a pillar like huh. the pillar is covering the face and the eye and as this camera moves the mom like pokes her head out uh. and i was like that I didn't even know who that was, and I was like, "That's creepy as fuck," and it was definitely on purpose. Nice. Like Ari Aster really pays attention to what yeah. is in the frame, yeah. and it's and, and, and it's and, really good. Yeah, and, and that's I think where I get a lot of the where I'd say, okay, storyline wise, I don't, it's so weird too because it's a cool story. It's just mm -hmm. confusing to the point where it's not satisfying. But yeah. I would still say the movie's worth a watch just based on the cool and surreal visuals. Mm -hmm. I think you can get enough. I was gonna say I'm going to go rewatch, and I'm like I want to like, have Taylor watch literally from the second he yeah. sits down at the theater to the end, and you get all of that. Like I loved in the theater hallucination how the use of blur is used as the characters become more concrete and less concrete. Like their faces blur and then brief. Like it becomes, it goes from being a animated thing to like a real life, but with like stage. It's mm. so interesting. Yeah. And yeah, all of the, it, like I think, is on purpose, like, meaningful. And... Yeah. Uh, but that that's, like, that's all I want out of the movie. That's, like, enough right there is that 20-minute. And I think you're right. Like, you could pull a couple 20-minute, like, him running from his therapist oh, to that. Fun. Like, that's a short film. Like, I would watch that. Yeah. Uh, but there are big chunks of it I, that I don't want to see. The, um... I don't uh, want someone else to watch. It's in one of the very first scenes when he's, he's like just going through the city, and uh, I because I, I remember this kid's playing with a boat, and the boat, the, the mom comes, takes him away, and the boat flips and sinks. Yeah, and it, so it's it's I, I remember that as soon as the movie ended, and I'm like that's that's why I I, I think on a second watch through of this movie, I I think this movie is just dense mm -hmm. with yeah. with references to itself. Right, uh, yeah. And even and that, I, the mom—that's a reference. Done, yeah. That, yeah, that mom like freaking out is a reference to his anxiety about that one time when he like ran away from his mom at the mall. Oh yeah, and like the other, again, if it's unreliable narrator, he's just seeing a mom being like, "Come on," and she sees it as her screaming at him. You know. Mm -hmm. The other uh, thing that we didn't mention, but I saw mentioned a lot, was uh, water just water mm. as a constant theme of this movie even down to the name Wasserman which Wasser Foster means water oh, in German oh dang that's wild look at that it's dense very dense go baby read about it <laughs> we're gonna get set up for our game and then we're gonna play our game it's called pick me pick me we'll be right back I'm here this is our new game it is called pick me pick me uh, there are seven clue categories. Year it was released, one of the top billed actors, director, tagline, quote from the movie, IMDb rating, and a piece of trivia from IMDb. Each one is applicable to five movies in a bank. And there are two movie banks, so you will be playing off of different movie banks. Um... What's going to happen is you're going to draft Snake Order, which for those of you who don't play fantasy football means if you go first in the first round, you go last in the next round. So in this case, it'd be like Nate, Jake, Jake, Nate, Nate, Jake, Jake, Nate, like that. Uh, you go back and forth picking categories until all the categories are gone. Whoever has the more categories does not pick the movie theme based on a clue I give you about the movies. So... Jake, you won the last game, which means you get to pick. Do you want... Debatable. 
uh, the movie theme choice or the first category choice? Wait, I won the last game. Wait, I don't you, care for okay. picking, but I Jake, won the last game. Jake, you clear. lost the last game. Would you like to pick <laughs> movie theme first or the categories first? Um, let me see. So if you pick categories first, you'll have four categories. Nate will have three, but you will not be able to choose which movie theme you want. If you choose movie theme, you pick what movie theme you want, but you only get three of the categories, not four. And, and then we're doing this. Did you say we're doing this twice? So we're snaking? Uh, the picks for categories are twice. Oh, I see. Uh, give me... Uh, give me uh, first choice on movie theme. Okay. Uh, so I get first choice in category. You do. So which category would you like first, Nate? Quote from the movie. Quote from the movie goes to Nate. Now you get two, Jake. Yep. I'm going to take tagline. Obvious. That's and an obvious first overall choice, Nate, by the way. I'm working with quote. I like it. You think I didn't pick horrendous quotes? <laughs> You're a prick. <laughs> no, I picked some. I think, I think you have separate quotes and taglines for me and Jake back there. Um, I will tell you that when I give you the clues, they're not always going to be in the same order. Okay, that's an interesting clarification. So the movies when, won't always be in the same order. When, uh, so I, I pick here, then do we alternate? Uh, you pick here, and then Jake goes, yes, 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 yes. So Nate's not going to pick two. Right. Okay, then wait, I'll wait. take... Do you have, how many do you have? You have one, and then two... And then Nate will have two. No, I am going to pick two and after you'll Jake. Have three. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. Then I will take. Year it was released. Year it was released. Nate, two. Top build actors. Okay. And. Uh, director. Director, all right. Jake, pick, pick which one you get, and then piece of trivia. The other one, piece of trivia. Yeah, Nick rating strike. IMDb rating. Yeah, it is. After I looked at it. Okay. <laughs> so Nate has four categories. Jake has three. Jake, you get to pick the movie theme first. Here are the two movie themes. Movie theme number one. Episode. We have done these on a podcast. Oh, by the way, movies are not in the same bank. So uh, the two categories are movies we've done a podcast on. And Marvel movies. None of the Marvel movies we've done a podcast on. Tough are, choice for Jake. None of, the uh, yeah. movies, none of the movies we've done a podcast on that are Marvel will be in the in the podcast category. They will all be available in the movie category, however. The Marvel one. Does that make sense? So, yes. Okay. Damn. You're screwed, Jake. That's just more help for me. Marvel movies we haven't done a podcast on. No, they could be the ones we've done a podcast on. That's what I'm saying, is that all the Marvel oh. movies will be in Marvel. None of the Marvel movies we've done podcasts on will be in podcast. Oh, okay. Yep. Fair enough. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna take movies that we've done a podcast on. I was hoping you would. I made this game specifically for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that has screwed me Let's in previous go. games. Everything has come up Millhouse in this. I'm, I wanted to make sure Nate got top build actors. And I wanted, I wrote Millhouse, and I wanted to make sure that he picked Marvel, because they're not going to be helpful. <laughs> hey, the, um, this is win-win. Either I win, or Jake won, either Jake won with Ben's help, or I won in spite of it. Yeah, that's honestly fair. Okay, so hey, here's... I, I, I feel no shame in a hollow victory. <laughs> here's how it's going to work, Nate. I'm going to give you all the clues to all of yours first, because it doesn't matter. It's just movie-based, right? They're two separate databases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you're going to fill in the blanks for what the five movies are. Okay. Again, they won't always okay. be in the same order. Uh, so first we'll give you a um, uh, quote from the movie. Sure. God, this one's so... Okay. You're a good man with a great heart, and it's hard for a good man to be king. That was number one. Oh, am I just guessing now? 
No. No, okay. no, no. I'm going to give you all of them from all the categories. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. let's do that. Okay. Um, no, no. I, I like this better. I like this better. No, like you get more points if you get it with one clue or two clues or three clues. Wait. So you're giving me the clues for one movie right now? Uh, yes. Okay. This is podcast gold. I thought you were giving me <laughs> the quote from the movie for all five movies. I was going to. And then to. I had to get all five of them. Oh, but this is what? better. I was going to. Yeah. I'm going to do that. We're changing the rules. All and right. I told you all the movies might be in different orders. Okay. The next one. The next All right. Is. So do I, do I get more points if I get it right now and then I can ask you to give me another hint for movie one? Uh, but you don't know if I give you a hint for movie one, right? Or should we do it that way? How do you guys want to do it? Do what? you want to do it where... What? I, Am I guessing the movie? <laughs> which, which number one through five? That's well, big. you just fill in. You just give me five movies based on 25 clues. Or 15 clues. 20 clues. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, hold on. Okay. We have one of two ways we could do this, right? I could give you all yes. the clues, and then you could guess five movies. I could give you a clue, and then if you get it right, you get one point minus how many clues you got. Or one point plus how many clues you were given. You weren't given. No, but then Nate has more. Oh, yeah. So Nate gets zero. No, no that doesn't help him at all. I mean, you could just give fixed points for... You could give fixed if, points on the first based on clue, how many... It's first clue is 15, second clue five, is 10. Four. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's do that. But I'm still not clear, so... So I'm just... I'm going to give you all do for you just number give one. Me, I'm going to give you all the All for number one. one. You stop. And then I just, do you want to guess or not? Do you want to guess on this? And clip? I stop you. Okay. But you only okay, get one okay. guess per movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm clear yeah. on that part. I was, that's what I was clarifying. Okay. Right. I, give me heart. a sec. It's Cause I am almost movie. sure I know what the movie is, but I'm not sure. That's a weird way to say, you know what you're doing. <laughs> I, I know who is being spoken to, yeah. but I don't know which movie it is. Oh, uh, okay. You want another hint? Uh, I'm thinking. Okay. Nope, I got it. All right, what is it? Uh, it's Thor: Love and Thunder. Incorrect. Damn it! It is Black Panther. <laughs> I I thought it was obvious. The other clues were Chadwick Boseman. Oh, you're right. That's Ryan so, Coogler. Yeah, I would have should have should have taken one more clue. I to be rating was seven point three. All right, Jake. Really? Yeah. Suffering I know. my hubris doesn't help. All right, Jake. Uh, we're gonna give you a clue. We'll start with tagline. That was your first pick. Okay. Uh, your tagline is every family tree hides a secret. These are movies we've done podcasts of. Family tree. I'm regretting this. <laughs> See how this is going to go down, Nate? <laughs> wait, what was the tagline for Black Panther? I don't know. Oh, wait, yeah. What, I, what? I do. <laughs> you, you, you fucking know you. <laughs> yeah, you better. Long live the king. I probably still would have fucked up that one. King to Is it? Is it hereditary? It is hereditary. <sighs> hey, oh. And you get. I was really I'm hoping you wouldn't get that. I, I, I was 100% sure what that was. Yeah. Number two, Nate. Quote. <laughs> You're going to hate this. I love you 3,000. No, I do know that one. Do you want to guess right away? I don't. Yeah, I, I do want to guess right away. What is it? Uh, that is Avengers Infinity War. Incorrect. Avengers Endgame. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> You're right. Do you, want, do you want to know what the top billed actor was? Robert Downey Jr. No, I don't care. That Robert wouldn't Downey help Jr. me. Do you know what the top billed actor for the rest of the movies are? Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah, this is working out in my favor. Oh, oh my this God. is so I'm, fun. I, I have no problem with you. I'm so mad at myself <laughs> that I picked the wrong one. I like thought about it and I still picked the wrong one. It's okay. It's okay. See, I I I, I remember that line being said, but yeah. uh, I couldn't remember yeah. if it was a, any of the Iron Man. I thought I would have guessed Iron Man mm -hmm. something. No, it's it's like his daughter saying it to him in, you know, oh, the that's Infinity. Right. I but, thought it, but I thought it was the first one, not the second one, for some reason. Like, I thought it was the ending of the first one. Yeah. All right, Jake. Your tagline for your second movie is, The world needed a hero. They got a guy. 
This is so frustrating because I know all of these ones <laughs> off the top of my head more than the Marvel ones. Nate, your tagline for the last one was Avenge the Fallen. Yeah, that would have helped. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Wait, can I use can I get the piece of trivia next? Yeah. But then it's only worth four points. But you're ahead. So That's fine. Yeah, All I right. want the piece of trivia. Uh, the piece of trivia is... Where is it? There it is. <laughs> this is not going to help. Love it. Uh, this is Alex Trebek's final appearance in a movie. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> okay, give me the year. Okay. The year is... Wait, 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 wait. What? 2021. Yep. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> He's still losing. All right, I know, three, I'm going to lose this. For three That's points, nothing Jay. to me. World needed a hero. They got a guy. Free guy! It is free guy. Damn it! Oh, my God. Three points, okay, t- So he has eight now total. Tag... Literally, when Ben explained the rules of this game, I was like, "I need the tagline." <laughs> and then you that didn't have first pick, hope. and you still Nate still gave it up. That's awesome. All right, Nate. Uh, next one. This hurts. It hurts so much. What do you want? The quote. I'm gonna give you the quote. Oh, that's the trivia. Excuse me. The quote's definitely the best one, except for tagline. Like <laughs> all of my clues are trash, except for quote. yeah. Quote is good, and then the. But the tagline's is, better. That's kind of catchy. It's got a nice ring to it. I mean, it's not technically accurate. The suit's a the suit's a gold titanium alloy, but it's oh, you hate me kind so of much. provocative the Im- the imagery way. Wait, you should be able to get this. I know it's one or two, and I don't <laughs> know which one it is. <laughs> Oops. I hate you. Do you want one of the top build actors? No. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> How about the director? <laughs> Would that help? It's it's Iron Man 1. It's got to be. You are right, Nate. It's Iron Man 1. All right. Way to go. Five points for Nate. I was Yeah, I was leaning Iron Man 1 because I can't it imagine could... him getting away with that bit later on. <laughs> well, it would have been it would have been the second movie right at the beginning. Yeah. Like someone, like him dealing with the fame, but yeah. All right, Nate, or Jake, sorry, your tagline. Beyond fear, destiny awaits. I have no idea what this is. This is a tough one. Give me a piece of trivia. Piece of trivia. Piece of trivia. Hans Zimmer spent a week in the deserts of Utah alone to assimilate with some of the sounds of the landscape and to his thinking for the score. Oh. Hans Zimmer. Mm-hmm. It's probably not a good thing that I feel like that doesn't help me. No, mm, that's okay. Give me the year. The year is twenty twenty two. Ah. Twenty twenty one. Yep. I was about I was about to guess, and then I think my guess was twenty twenty two. So now I don't have a guess. This is for three points. I'm still gonna guess it. Go Triangle of sadness. Ah, uh, Dune. Nope. Oh, Cut me out. Gonna say, Nate? oh fuck! The yeah. deserts of Utah. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you said, as soon as I said the word desert, I was like, oh, the fear thing with the, mm-hmm. yeah, the box. Yeah. Alright, Nate, your quote for movie number four. Wait a minute, you guys aren't the real Avengers? I can tell Hulk gave it away. Which one of the two? Do you want one of the top build actors? <laughs> I'll give it to you for free. No, 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 no. Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, you're right. It's five. Spider Man Homecoming. 
It's well, so frustrating. Like, I can see every scene as soon as you say it. I just don't know which movie because Marvel's so homogenous that okay. it could be like one of three movies. Yeah. That could I have been argue, Spider-Man. I would argue that it's not homogeneity. That it's that they succeeded mm. in creating a, a shared universe. universe. Yeah, it's great for everything except for this particular game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jake. Number four. Your tagline is partner up with a legend. Honestly, at this point, I just like hearing the trivia also. Okay. Oh, maybe I don't. I have a guess. During Mr. Mime's interrogation, (laughs) he mimics Sharon Stone's leg crossing scene from Basic Instinct. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Detective Pikachu. Correct. I am so glad I took that trivia because I my guess was a Mario movie. Oh, mm. close. Yeah, same same vibe. All right, Jake's ahead by two going into the last Very movie. Very similar vibe. This is the last movie for you, Nate, and the last movie for Jake. Nate, yep. your quote is... Why can't I paste? Hold, please. There we go. Nope. Hold on. <clears throat> Control. This is thrilling. V. Oh, he's got a Mac. Okay. Anybody on yeah, our so side? It's, it's hiding any silly. shocking and fantastic abilities that they'd like to disclose. I'm open to suggestions. <sighs> Do you want to know the actor, Nate? Nope. <laughs> it's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> I'll still give you five points. Civil War. Full title, please. Captain America <laughs> Civil War. Yeah, correct. <laughs> nice. I thought that was another... I was going to guess Avengers too. Damn, nice. All right, Jake, you need to get it after all of your clues in order to tie with two clues or less to win. Are you ready? Yes. Here's the tagline. Nate, I'm sorry. A new terror from the mind of Academy Award winner Jordan Peele. Uh, um, I'd like to... We've done all you know, of I them. Can... Have we? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, g- give me the trivia anyway. I, can, I get the trivia and still win with it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Despite being featured prominently, Fry's Electronics closed all of its locations on February 24, 2021, prior to the film's production. The film shot in the Burbank, California location and recreated the interior. I actually didn't know that. Isn't that crazy? Uh, Sad. Nope. Nope is correct. And (laughs) our winner with 16 points is Jake. This is the first Honestly, Jake victory that I'm not bitter about. That was mine yeah. to lose. I should have got all five of those. Yeah. Yeah. I and and I will say, uh, well played by Ben. I <laughs> I I think that you made that a fair game while still correctly guessing what we each would guess. <laughs> yeah. And it will probably worked out exactly as you anticipated. One hundred percent. How I anticipated. <laughs> yeah. Nate gets all the RD, every one of them. I was like, Robert Downey Jr., Robert Downey Jr., Robert Downey Jr. I fucking hope Nate picks this. I was going to say, I, I, I'm happy I didn't play into your game by not going to the actor ever. But oh, I just gave that it to him. That would have been really funny if I, uh, I'd have had to go through. I was betting on you having more clues. So that way you could have a clue that didn't help you at all. Just if you had three suffer, clues. Yeah. yeah, if you had three clues and one of them was bad, that would suck. But that was worth, yeah, worth the effort. Funny. I was ready to risk it for it for the funny part of it uh great hey thanks everybody for listening once again uh this is roman cinema you can find us on youtube at youtube.com slash at roman cinema or listen to your podcast if you're listening right now anywhere you get your podcast if you do listen on apple Podcasts, please leave us a review i'd like to thank my guests nate and jake for joining us today nate jake jake how about jake jake do you have anything to recommend well i've been uh I'm a little late to the show, but I've been watching Barry. 
uh, I believe various four seasons, correct? Yep. I binged two quick fast. Quick fast. Um, oh, you'd the, like you're new to the show. Yeah, yeah, I had never seen any of it. Um, started season three, had to slow down. Gets a little heavier. Mm. Does. So, four um, just gets yeah. more of that. It's good shit. So yeah, it's 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 a really good show. Um, keeps keeps me guessing. HBO Max, you can find that. Uh, full series out now, so you don't have to worry about it getting canceled or anything. It's just oh look at that, it's all there. So that's great. Nate, what do you got? Also, oh, sorry, also watch the Women's World Cup. Probably too late to. I don't I don't know what the turnaround time on these is. Uh, yeah, by Monday, hopefully. I just recommend that ad you sent us. That was great. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, that was sick. Yeah, the Women's World Cup ad. It's cool. But yeah, Women's yeah. World Cup, sport, women's soccer. It's great. Definitely. Thanks, Jake. Nate, what do you got? I got very little. Uh, we're doing these so regularly that like I'm still we're still watching the shows I recommended last time. Uh, we did start watching The Witcher season three. Uh, it's still worth watching. It's not. I know. It's not as good. Yeah. So I mean, if you really love Henry Cavill's Witcher, which I do, then continue watching it. That's my recommendation, I guess. Uh, but if you were like so so on the show, don't bother. <laughs> You're good. Yeah. All right. And, and that's, that's I will. I will watch everything it's... Henry Cavill's Witcher's in. But like yes. this season is not as good. You know how it's... many monsters I've seen in the first four episodes? Two. Three. Uh, and they're boring. Damn. They're kind of boring. It's also I I haven't seen it yet. Um, I I surely still will, but it's got to be bittersweet because you know after this it's only going to tank. Yeah. I kind of see why he's not in it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Greener pastures. All right, that's on Netflix. Yeah. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to recommend the After Party. Season two just came out on Netflix or on Apple TV Plus. It is a story where comedian, comic, comedic actors are at a after party and someone gets murdered, and then they have to figure out who did it. And every episode is a different genre of movie for like 40 minutes. This last episode was Paul Walter Hauser from Blackbird playing a noir Reddit detective, and it was hilarious. What? Is this on Apple TV? That Plus. sounds incredible. Yeah. Oh, that's why I haven't heard of it. My favorite. Season two just came Wait, out. Wait, it's incredible. Is it all one yeah. storyline? Yeah, it's like anthological. So the first season is one story, one murder. The next season is another murder. Okay. So you see it's like from, American Horror Story style. Yeah, you see every episode's from a different person's and point of view and like anthology. reveals more clues. Anthology, yeah. Anthological. You like, you did anthropological, but drop the P. Yeah. That's how English right. works, right? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but yeah, go check out the After Party season two on Apple TV Plus. That sounds awesome, though. Uh, that that sounds really cool. It's a fun time. We love it. Uh, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, we'll see you next week with something new. Enjoy your room. Enjoy your cinema. We'll see you next time.